Well, there is obviously a trend. As much as nutrition science likes to rely on big global surveys and trends, this one's too obvious to ignore. Insulin resistance has become the common, the most common health disorder worldwide at the same time that refined seed oils have become the most commonly consumed fats. This is an, a remarkable coincidence. And indeed, I, I do think it goes beyond coincidence. I think there are some important connections here. Insulin matters, of course, insulin resistance does so much because not only it's so common, but it contributes to essentially every non-infectious chronic disease, either directly causing it or exacerbating it. So think problems like type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, heart disease, infertility, and more. Of course, I wrote an entire book on the topic of why insulin resistance is such a problem. But let's come back to linoleic acid. The main culprit in why refined seed oils are, I would say, appropriately vilified. Is linoleic acid itself the culprit or is the things it gives birth to? Those double bonds in that polyunsaturated fat certainly make it unstable. And the more unstable the fat is, the more likely it is to undergo peroxidation. So peroxidation can be this process of manipulating the fat, whether it is in a fryer or in our body, we end up converting the linoleic acid into its production, uh, the peroxidation products, like some of the big ones, 4-HNE or 13-HODE, 13 13-HODE, 13 and other oxylipins. Those are the main peroxidation products, or the little villains that are actually potentially the problem. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's explore the evidence. Now, as I do so, I hope you will appreciate the progression that we're going to take. I want to start with the simplest of biological models that we biomedical scientists use, namely cell cultures. So we're going to look at the evidence in cells. Then we're going to move on to a little bit of animal evidence. Now, the nice thing about both of those models is while they are stepping up in complexity, going from isolated cells to animals is certainly a step up, with humans being the most complex, not just because of our biology, but because of our, well, the variety and the complication of perfectly trying to control every, in, uh, every aspect. Whereas the animal studies, they're all basically identical twins. But as we, with the simpler model comes a little more clarity. All right, well, let's look at that clarity. Firstly, a 2016 molecular metabolism paper by Sasson et al. tested fat cells or adipocytes with unoxidized or what they intended to be just straight linoleic acid. When they did so, there was no effect of insulin resistance. That the fat cells treated with linoleic acid they had normal insulin signaling. Glucose uptake, as measured in the study, was perfectly fine. However, when they treated these adipocytes with the, ox with the peroxidation product, 4-HNE, things didn't work out so well. They found that the 4-HNE was compromising a particular protein called the insulin receptor substrate 1, or IRS1. In order for normal insulin, insulin signaling to occur, when insulin binds to its insulin receptor, the most immediate next step is going to be that IRS1 gets phosphorylated or activated. They found that that went down by about 50%. No surprise, there was a reduction in glucose transport. This already, in this one single study, is highlighting an important variable, that linoleic acid didn't directly cause the problem, but its peroxidation product did. Similarly, a 2023 study in geroscience by Gutierrez Mariscal et al., they hit visceral fat cells with 4-HNE. Not only did they see some substantial mitochondrial damage, which is extremely relevant, indeed relevant in multiple other disorders that I'm not discussing, perhaps including cancer, but they also found that insulin sensitivity dropped, but linoleic acid alone had no real effect. And finally, just to round out some evidence on fat uh, on cells, a 2019 redox biology paper by Zhang et al. saw 4-HNE compromise muscle cell in insulin signaling, this time by inhibiting the activation of a protein called AKT. 
I just mentioned to IRS1, well, go a few steps down in the insulin signaling pathway and you get to AKT. AKT is a critical activation point. If it is comprom compromised, insulin signaling is compromised. So in my view, based on these studies and a handful of others from the based with cell culture, used using cell culture, the pattern appears clear. Linoleic acid is kind of neutral in this regard, but its peroxidation products are not. Now, the animal data kind of scales it all up a bit. A 2015 Journal of Biological Chemistry study by Beam et al. fed rats linoleic acid-rich diets. Insulin resistance was observed, and in particular, they, they, in particular, they looked at insulin resistance in the heart and found that there was evidence of it. A 2020 um, paper published in the journal Scientific Reports gave mice soybean oil. Obesity, insulin resistance went up, and there was also, importantly, a threefold increase in some of the peroxidation products like 13-HODE and 9-HODE. That was the HODE oxylipin that I mentioned earlier in the liver. So huge increases in the level of these peroxidation products in the liver of these mice. But just to compare it to another group, mice in the same study that were fed a diet enriched with coconut oil fared much better, not only gaining less weight, but maintaining better insulin signaling. So things are getting a little more complicated. Now, when we get to humans, it actually gets even more complicated. So the cell evidence suggested with, with all of the clarity that is largely only capable with cell cultures, that linoleic acid itself wasn't, didn't appear to be a problem, but its peroxidation products were. When you were feeding the animals diets high in seed oils, enriched with linoleic acid, of course, things appeared to be a little more consistent, that the animals were developing insulin resistance. Now with humans, again, it does get complicated. Um, you can, with a lazy search of databases, get a lot of correlational studies. Correlational studies, of course, are based on questionnaires, and they are so unreliable, either because of the nature of the questionnaire itself, the nature of the response from the test subjects and their ability to recall what they eat perfectly, or even, unfortunately, a bias of the scientific group. They're so unreliable that I am honestly not even going to waste my time or your time to review them. I don't think any nutrition decision should ever be based on a correlation study, and I have very low regard for such tools. So I only want to rely on clinical studies with direct interventions and clear outcomes. But that, of course, narrows it down. And there's not a lot of studies that we can rely on. And every one of them is confounded by the fact that they use diets that are always high in carbohydrates as well. So to put a fine point on this and make it clear, I'm unaware of any diet that has used primarily a low carbohydrate approach and then compared different fats. So what would it look like if you had a group of humans eating ketogenic diets that was in one group perhaps enriched with soybean oil as the main fat and another enriched with you know, animal fats or fruit fats like coconuts or olives? I'm unaware of any study that has ever done this. So we have to consider this.